Good morning, everybody. We're going to get started here in a couple minutes. Don't open the beer. Have I said that yet? Don't open the beer. Please, don't open the beer. Well, welcome, everybody, um, to the fifth annual New York State Brewers Conference, uh, Conference presented by Deutsche Beverage Technology. We've got a big few days ahead of us right now. Before we get started, I wanted to thank our conference sponsors. Without their support and your attendance, this would not be possible. They've invested in you by being here, and they've invested in the NYSBA with their support of this conference. I also want to thank our, uh, and recognize our official sponsoring partners. Uh, their support uh, happens throughout the entire year, and we thank them. I want to thank Deutsche Beverage Technology for being our presenting sponsor for the second year. We very much appreciate your support, and thank you to Greenport Harbor Brewing Company for this year's beer uh, that'll officially kick off the conference in a few minutes. Don't open the beer yet. <laughs> Sorry, last year was the people opened the beer. All right. Um, the conference beer is actually special this year because, believe it or not, this is our 20th anniversary of the New York State Brewers Association. So, you, so you'll be hearing more about that shortly. I also want to recognize a few more folks. Uh, I want to uh, recognize Brew Recruit for sponsoring last night's welcome reception. Thank you, Stephanie Vavanese, once again, for doing that. Uh, as you all know, the, uh, this year's conference theme is sustainability, and we want to thank Econs for being a, uh, the sustainability sponsor. Thank you, Merchant Swag, for being the swag bag sponsor. This year's uh, lanyards are sponsored by Bia Diagnostics. Thank you for that. Uh, and new this year, we had a, a Women in Beer Scholarship, which is sponsored by Hopsteiner. This scholarship awarded, uh, was awarded to two women in the industry to attend the conference for free this year. The winners were he Heidi Manikheim with Seneca Street Brewing, uh, Brew Pub, and uh, Alexis Colton with Talking Cursive. Congratulations to you both. Where are you? Are you here? <laughs> Heidi? Alexis, uh, all of the beer stations this year are sponsored by ABS Commercial, Hopsteiner, Amoretti, Link to Beverage, and the Hop Guild. And thank you to all the breweries that donated the beer to this year's conference. We got plenty of beer. It's great. Um, and finally, there will be a happy hour and reception in this room tonight from 5.30 to 7, which is sponsored by Country Malt and Yakima Chief Hops. As you can see, we've got a lot of exhibitors this year, our largest number ever with 100. We have 100 exhibitors this year. Many come from all over the country and Canada to be here over the next two days. Please take time to visit all of them, both here and downstairs. Uh, our sponsors, exhibitors, make it possible uh, for us to keep your costs affordable and low to attend this conference. New this year, we have a wellness area, which is sponsored by Signature B&B. That's downstairs by registration. Um, there, you can take a break. There'll be, uh, you can get a massage. We got yoga, uh, or simply take a breath uh, and for a little downtime. Uh, there'll be non-alcoholic beer down there and also uh, non-alcoholic beverages for you to enjoy. Finally, tomorrow morning uh, at 8 a.m. is our annual member meeting in room 1A. Uh, there, we're going to go through all of the NYSBA updates, what we've been doing, share our financials, and that is only for brewery members only, which is designated on your badges if you are a brewery member. I also want to recognize um, your board of directors, the NYSBA board of directors. This is your board, and they are all here today. I want you to recognize their faces so you can say hello and talk to them and about the industry and what you'd like to see uh, from the NYSBA moving forward. Lastly, before I introduce our board president, Richard Vandenberg, I have to thank the conference committee who spent many hours uh, going through a lot of abstracts to select the seminar sessions you'll take part in today and tomorrow. Rich Michaels, Kim Porter, Jen Myers, Ivan Dedeck, Kevin Kane, Hutch Kugeman, Kevin Mullen, Heather Grant, and Christine Olivier. Thank you so much for, for the time that you put in uh, to these sessions. I also need to thank our amazing staff, and a special thank you to Kim Porter, uh, who really uh, did a lot of work and a great job coordinating all of the moving parts. I'm sure you have shared a lot of emails with her uh, in this massive endeavor. And then, of course, we couldn't do any of this without Jen Myers, Chloe Kay, and Megan Connolly Hopp, who've worked so hard to make this conference possible. So thank you. Now I'd like to introduce 
uh, our board president, Rich Vandenberg. He is the co-owner of Greenport Harbor Brewing Company on Long Island's North Fork. He is in the second and final year of his presidency, and as a lawyer, he's made an impact on the NYSBA by shoring up all of our processes and building a solid committee structure for the association as we continue to grow. He's also graciously brewed this year's beer. Uh, don't open the beer yet. Uh, and so we'll crack that off. Rich, Rich, when he's done with his speech, we'll do the conference uh, kickoff, and then uh, the sound is amazing, if you haven't uh, heard that yet. So, Rich. Good morning, New York. Good to be back. Amen. All right. So, hello, 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 New York. Well, it's great to be back again with everybody uh, again this year. Um, I'm sure we're all going to have another great conference, and I, and I want to thank all of you that are here this week to learn, have some laughs, and celebrate New York State craft beer. I'm going to repeat some of the thanks. I, I want to make sure we, uh, again, thank Paul and his staff for uh, who've done it again. They've brought another amazing job here of putting this uh, together, our conference together. I also want to thank um, our New York State Brewers Association Conference and Competition Committees who worked really hard to organize our sessions and, and get our speakers lined up and, and uh, uh, the awards ceremony, which is going to be a lot of fun. So great job for those guys. One more round of applause for them. <clears throat> Finally, I, I, I'm also going to say a huge thanks to our official sponsors and exhibitors who've made this CBC one of the most coveted in the country. Without their support, we simply could not do what we do so well as an association. So this year, New York State celebrates its 20th year, the NYSBA, 20 years, hard to believe. The vision, work, and dedication of the original board set us on a path to becoming one of the most respective, innovative, and successful state associations in the country. From groundbreaking franchise reform legislation, to the farm brewery law, to tax breaks, regulatory reforms, the NYSBA has brought thought leadership like no other in the country. I can tell you it's been my honor to learn and serve from some of those old OG board members. Fred, that's your shout out. Um, you know, working hard to try and move the mission of our association forward. Bringing a level of professionalism and stronger governance has been some of my contributions. And it's been an amazing ride. Getting to know such talented, dedicated people over the past 10 years that I've been on the board has been inspiring. But it also makes me keenly aware. As I draw to the close of my term as president, along with uh, some other long-serving members who will term out, we, uh, we can't be reelected, and so we will term out later this year, it is incredibly important to sound the call for others to step up and fill the void. As we celebrate 20 years of successful progress, we can say we've accomplished a lot, but there is a lot more work to be done. We continue to face new and challenging proposed legislation that could harm our craft industry, increased container deposits, extended producer responsibility laws, tightening restrictions on advertising, taproom hours. We have to remain vigilant and proactive. So it's even more important to cultivate new blood, new leadership, and renewed engagement from the next generation of membership. I urge each and every one of you to consider joining a committee. Engage with your regional leadership, or put your hat in the ring and run for a board seat. You won't regret it, and your willingness to help will be forever respected and appreciated. In addition to the regulatory challenges, we also face the challenge of choice. So I also challenge each of you and all of us to find new ways to elevate the New York State brand even further. Your board has been working to pursue and demand greater access and presence at our state, county, and local venues. We must gain better insight and understanding of how those concession agreements are bid and awarded. 
And we should all leverage the fact that we are a multi-billion dollar economic engine in the state, which should mean greater New York State craft presence and closer venue partnerships. We have to find ways to build and support greater pride and loyalty to New York State craft beer in the face of ever-changing legislation and increased competition with the multitude of beverage choices out there. We must constantly build upon and reinforce the message that New York craft beer is the best choice. Your future, our future, New York State craft beer's future depends upon it. So, we're getting close to that toast. Greenport Harbor this year was humbled to have the uh, honor and opportunity to brew the conference beer. Don't open it yet. We're going to have a toast together, but first a quick note about the beer that we canned on Tuesday, actually. I was, I was sweating bullets that we were going to actually be able to pull this off, so thank God we did. We call this beer Excelsior Pale Ale. It's a hazy 100% New York farm pale ale brewed in collaboration with the Hop Guild as part of their New York Hop Project series. It features 100% of their Excelsior Hop blend and hop sauce, along with a selection of Hudson Valley malts, it has beautiful notes of melon and ripe tangelo, and we mash top the beer to free up the elevated thiols found in the hop blend. I want to thank those who partnered in helping us make the beer um, and making it possible, along with Chloe Kay for her design of the label and TLF Graphics for producing the labels. We hope you enjoy it. So, the toast. So this is the way it's going to work. When I say the word cheers, then you open your beer, okay? And at the end of my toast, I want to hear nice and loud, three times, everyone's going to yell, New York Craft. Okay? So here we go. Go forth. Do bold and mighty things. Join a committee. Run for a seat. Engage with your legislator. Let us stay focused in our efforts, united in our voice, and committed to the goal of excellence. May we all become even stronger in the next 20 years and celebrate the journey of friendship and unity together. Now say it with me. New York craft, New York craft, New York craft. Cheers. <laughs> Have fun, everybody. Here's to you guys. Thank, thank you, Rich. And I, uh, with that message, hope you all really heard that message because um, the board uh, is so critical and has been so critical uh, in everything that we do. I get a lot of credit, our staff gets a lot of credit for things. We don't get to do any of it without the board and the board really works hard every day on your behalf. So run for those board seats if they come open in your region. Uh, once again, I want to thank uh, Lyndon Meyer Monroe, who's sponsoring the keynote speeches. Chris, thank you. I uh, appreciate it very much for sponsoring today's keynote speech and tomorrow's keynote speech. Right now, it's my honor to, uh, as sustainability as our um, theme this year, to introduce Ben Foster. Ben is a champion of clean energy and sustainability programs across the United States and internationally. He's worked on hundreds of private and public sector projects from strategy and planning through development and operations as president of Fostera LLC. Ben is based in upstate New York and is an avid fan of craft brewing and artisanal products. He has supported New Belgium Brewing's industry-wide sustainability efforts in carbon neutral fra flagship brand Fat Tire. He also works with small and mid-sized brewers as they begin their journey toward a more sustainable future. We're happy to have Ben with us today to talk about sustainability. Let's welcome Ben Foster. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Thank you all for the opportunity here. This is a great event. Uh, last year, I had the chance to meet some of your team at uh, CBC in Minneapolis, and uh, it was great to learn and share ideas and, and uh, have the opportunity to come and address you all today. Let's see. All right. There we go. Great. Uh, so the theme today is, of course, sustainability for New York brewers. So uh, as we focus on this, it's important 
to think about what that means to you, and we're going to explore that right now. Um, last year, uh, we started the discussion of how to make this event and the activities and the sessions of uh, today and tomorrow this conference to be timely and relevant and something that would be of interest for you. Uh, I've had the pleasure and privilege of focusing on sustainability-related uh, initiatives for the past 15 years or more on uh, big companies from Cliff Bar and 7th Generation to the Department of Energy and EPA to uh, over 100 different municipalities around the country and some international world. But I'll tell you, I like working with brewers the best. Your artisans and craftspeople, your entrepreneurs and your community leaders. You know how to make a great product while having fun doing it. And it's a product that I certainly enjoy. Now I'm based in uh, up the North Way in Saratoga Springs and my focus on sustainability, as you heard a little bit about, uh, for the brewing industry is working with New Belgium for the last number of years on their efforts to, to create the world's first carbon neutral certified uh, craft beer in Allagash brewing up in Portland, Maine on some of their efforts to set targets and meet them uh, going forward through 2030. I was honored to be asked to, to join you all today to kick off this, uh, this conference on the sustainability topic. And I won't try to cover everything in detail and what it all means, but I hope to leave you with enough information that you can continue your journey on towards sustainability. Now, uh, later on today, we've got a session that dives a little bit more deeply into uh, a couple of examples you'll see here and, and all kinds of great uh, uh, ideas and projects and things from some of your peers at Sing Sing Kill in Hudson Valley. Uh, there are also dozens of different sessions and vendors over here that, where you can learn uh, more about what's happening. So uh, in terms of where we start, I think it's important to start with what is sustainability? What does it mean? So in preparation for this event, we, took, uh, a, we created a survey and issued that to all the Brewers Association members to get your feedback late last year, earlier this year. And what we heard back was, uh, the sustainability topic falls into three categories from your perspectives. There's sustainable business models, there's sustainable brewing operations, and your impact on the community. So what we want to do is explore each one of those one at a time and see how that relates to, to what you're doing and, and uh, if that seems to ring true. So first on brewery business, here's some of the feedback that we got. Uh, being here, brewing beer 10 or 20 years from now, operating with minimum impact on the environment and the planet while still operating a profitable business. And then staying in business and doing everything we can to leave a minimal footprint behind. So what we can see there is that everyone's focused on sustainability from a business perspective as well as an environmental perspective. Does this seem to ring true with you guys? This is something that you all recognize and, and feel as well. This is a representation of the responses we got I know from my perspective personally, when I was going to college, my mom started a restaurant in Gloucester, Massachusetts, where I grew up, and a seasonal community, uh, I'd go back home for the summertime, work 10, 12 hours a day, six plus days a week, uh, and to help her with that uh, business. And I could see firsthand how tough it was to make ends meet, to run the business, to meet customer needs, and to be part of the community. So I certainly understand and appreciate everything you're doing. And it's important when we talk about sustainability that we talk about the business needs. And we heard that already, why it's so important for everyone to, to work together towards those. We look at sustainable uh, business operations, brewing operations. Uh, some of the feedback was purchasing New York State ingredients, using solar generated electricity, composting our spent malt and recycling all the materials we can. Another is conserving our materials, energy, uh, effort, lack of waste. One of the things that's interesting working with the bigger brewers is waste is a big issue. So, uh, and I don't just mean that in terms of the packaging that comes in and what do you do with that, but they're looking at waste from the standpoint of uh, beer that maybe is brewed that never gets sold. Maybe there's a batch that didn't turn out from a quality perspective. Maybe the canning line went awry and they had to toss that. Maybe it was a seasonal that then had to be returned. So they're looking at waste from the perspective, not only of what do we do with the materials, but how do we reduce beer that never gets delivered to an end customer? Because that's waste as well. It's waste not just in terms of what happens from an environmental perspective, but also from a business perspective, right? That's money lost, money down the drain, literally. 
And finally, impact on the community. So we heard from a community perspective, uh, it means being mindful of our environmental impact along with our role in the local community and the craft industry at large. You're all looking forward to how can you be part of the community as a whole. It's important to, be, to make more positive impacts and less neg negative impacts on the world around us so that future generations can have at least what we have, if not more. So these are some of the themes we heard in looking at how do we approach this, what can we do uh, as a group. So I think it's also important to step back and look at what is sustainability from a global perspective. So this comes from the UN, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, it's a version of that. Sustainability consists of fulfilling the needs of current generations without compromising the needs of future generations while ensuring balance between economic growth, environmental care, and social well-being. So without any prompting, I think the brewers here in the state are fairly well aligned. And you can imagine what would happen if you weren't. If you said, well, sustainability means this to us, but all the policymakers and stakeholders and the folks you know, around the state, nationally, globally, are moving in a different direction, that'd be a really big challenge. But instead, when you hear these topics, know that you are aligned in your own ways uh, towards those bigger goals. And that means that the wind is at your back. That means that moving forward, uh, you've got the support of all kinds of different entities, whether you realize that or not. I also want to pause for a second and talk about, you know, you've probably heard GHG footprints or carbon footprint or GHG or CO2 emissions. Now for the sake of this, we won't go into all the definitions. Uh, they're important in their own different ways, but essentially they all have similar meanings and I'll use those terms somewhat interchangeably and you can as well. Ultimately, we want to focus on what can we do? What actions can we take? Not the definitions. We don't want to get bogged down in the definitions. So this t the sustainable conversation that I've had, probably you have internally as well, typically goes something like this. We have, we, we like the idea, we get the concept, we want to do something, but it's too expensive, or we don't understand what to do, or you know, what impact is that going to have on our beer? Or would our customers even care? So we asked that question too, what are your perceived challenges? And, and what came back is, in this current climate, the cost of raw materials, we know materials, ingredients, packaging, keep going up. So if, we're, if we need to make some changes, is sustainability within the reach financially of craft brewers? Lack of information on new technology and methods. You know, what can we do? What's the latest? You've got some great uh, vendors here and all around the state that have solutions for you. Often there's a financial burden that has to be considered. Money spent now has to pay off in a reasonable amount of time. And to customers, sustainability is semi-important, we're not sure. Uh, to customers, sustainability, uh, we will have a long way to go in spreading the word of grain to glass. Now, the one thing I'd like to make sure that you take away, if it's anything from this session, is that sustainability is not a trade-off. It's not a trade-off between revenue and the environment. It's not a trade-off between the effort that's required and the resources that you have. And it's not a trade-off between the investment that's required and profit. So these are all valid concerns, of course. Um, and this takes us down two different paths. One is to understand what are the real concerns? What are the things that are maybe stopping you from taking those actions? And then the second is, what can you do about it? What are the things you can do? So we're gonna explore that in a little more detail. First is understanding the environmental impact. So you heard the term grain to glass, you're familiar with that, but it even has to be broader when we think about the choices that you make and how you brew and, and, and the operations and what you do uh, from a market perspective. So if we start all the way at the front end of that process from the agriculture, so before it even becomes grain, on the farm, what are the practices that they use? Where is it grown? How is it harvested? How far is the transportation then to the maltster? Once it gets to the maltster, then what processes do they use? How much energy do they consume? How far away is that maltster then to your brewery? Within the brewery, what methods do you use? What recipes, what grain bill, what packaging, what processes do you have? What's the heat source? How efficient is that? Those are all things that make a difference. Then ultimately, how much of that do you sell on-premise versus off-premise? What do you do, the waste streams that come through from your operation? And then finally, how does that get delivered to your customer? All of these things along the way make a difference. 
So it leads to the question of like, how much difference does it make? So we looked at a free carbon accounting tool that I'll give a link to later and you can learn about more this afternoon. And we looked at the typical brewery emissions and this is for small to medium size. So probably most of you in the room. What is the percent contribution to the total emissions, the total environmental impact for these four different categories? So in terms of agriculture and malting process with the transport from the farm to the maltster and maltster to you, that's about 25 to 50% of the total footprint comes just from that, those decisions right there. In the brewing process, including how you operate in the facility and the waste that comes out of that, that's maybe another 18 to 25%. Packaging, the packaging choices you make, glass, cans, kegs, how that gets transported in from the packaging provider to the brewery, another 15 to 22%. And then finally, distribution and retail. How far does it go? Uh, does it go just to local taps? Is it just served on site? Is it in, is it, does it go further away out and, and distributed to grocery stores or, or other locations? That's 15 to 20%, including refrigeration and the cost and impact of those. So when we look at the different values and the ranges, of course, the question is, you know, what could you do to make that uh, different? What, what can you do to make an impact? And we'll talk about this a little while in terms of the actions you can take. But I think the question that comes up as looking at this and trying to model, like, what is an ideal beer? What is, what is the best beer? What's the best characteristics? So if you, took, if you took a beer glass and you said, well, I want to fill this with something that has natively the lowest carbon footprint. I was talking to some folks this morning here that did, did something just like that. They, they thought, okay, what would it take to brew the lowest carbon, the lowest environmental impact beer? If you want to fill this glass, what are the ideal characteristics that would go into it? Well, if you step back and you look at the modeling and you say, what would that take? It'd be brew, uh, brewed with a minimum net energy use, right? You wouldn't want to waste a lot of energy. You wouldn't want to do that in a way that, uh, that isn't efficient. You want to make sure that all the energy that you do put into this glass comes from green sources. You'd want to make sure to purchase local, low impact grains and malting services. You'd want your transportation to be short haul and low impact from electric or others. Uh, some of you know uh, that there's all kinds of different ways to get beer or uh, grain to your brewery around the state. You'll hear about some of those later. And you want it served on site in glasses that are washed. And then finally, of course, you want to reduce, reuse, recycle, repurpose your waste in whatever way is possible. So it has the minimum impact, in some cases even upcycling. So I want to pause for a moment because you all recognize this beer. You know this beer. You brew this beer. Today, those of you who are farm brewers and are taking local grains from a local source and making those in, in an efficient way, serving them in the tap room, that's very close already to what we consider some of the ideal characteristics. So I want to pause and say that's, that's an amazing thing you're doing and we want to make sure that we keep doing that going forward. Now, of course, everything can't fit into that same glass in the profile, but I do want to pause and show that revenue and sustainability are linked. So this theme that sustainability is not a trade-off. Now, Bart, who you'll hear from tomorrow, can, more, uh, tomorrow can, of course, adjust on some of these things, but uh, if we looked at a sample 16-ounce pour of beer crafted sustainably today, so not leading edge, not everything you could possibly do, but the average today in the state. Let's look at the price point of that probably for most of you. If I look at a price list or I visit your brewery, it's seven to nine dollars, somewhere in that range, right? Sometimes a little bit more, depending on the, on the grain bill and the brewing techniques and where you're located, sometimes a little bit less. The GHG emissions or the carbon emissions for that 16 ounces of beer is about nine ounces. So this is the, this is the starting point for that beer in the glass that we say would be uh, pretty ideal. Now, a customer comes in, to the tap room, they like the beer and they say, I want a four pack to go. So they go to the cooler next to the bar and they take the four pack and you know, with a pack tech and they head out the door. They say, this is great. Now, of course, your revenue, right? Your price point you can charge is probably half of that, somewhere in that range per, per 16 ounces. Plus or minus again, depending on the, on the brew. Your greenhouse gas emissions have also increased by 50%. So you've lost 50% of the top line revenue and then 
the GHG emissions related to that because now you have cans, you have the canning process or bottles or some other form. You get the pack techs, the energy going into those and then headed out the door. And then finally, if you distribute that further out, of course, you know, you got to give a discount to the distributor. And so when it's distributed, you lose another half of that revenue, roughly. And meanwhile, your greenhouse gas or the emissions impact from that goes up by another 50%. So what that means is that these two are linked. And so you can say, some would say, we're going to make up the losses in volume. You know, my, my experience doing this uh, business uh, for 30 something years is that's, that's a rough way to, to make it work out. Instead, we need to do something different. One other uh, aspect that we looked at is, of course, consumer and market trends. So from a beverage daily report in 2018, pre-COVID, if you can all remember back then, I, I, I like to reminisce about the days before uh, that hit, um, is consumers prefer and are willing to pay more for a truly sustainable beer, but they want to make sure that the attributes of that beer are as good, if not better, than what they would buy if it wasn't sustainably uh, brewed. But when it is of the same quality or better, they're willing to pay the price extra and they're willing to prefer that product over another one. But there's a differentiation potential. So making them aware of what's going into it, what you're doing, how you're contributing, as we saw earlier, to the benefits for future generations. So if you're already doing these things and you already have a tap room that has a uh, uh, you're serving the primary, the bulk of your beer that way, and you have uh, low impact rains, and you have an efficient process. You know, where else can you make a difference? What could you do? Well, there's a lot. And in talking to you all here, what's exciting to me is everybody's trying something different. You know, this brewer is trying this method, and that's trying something else. And these guys over here have uh, a, a, new, a new way to get grain or hops or a brewing method or a technique for packaging or, or reuse. And so it's really exciting that there's so much going on here just in the state alone, let alone uh, nationally. So it's important to think about the areas imp of impact you have in three different ways. So of course the brewery itself, right, at, at the core of it, when we looked at that brewery operations. But then also customers are part of that equation and that was linked to revenue and of course your community at large. So we're gonna explore each one of those and some ideas that you can take with you. Now, before we do that, there are a lot of free resources. And one of them that I like to point out is at the drinksustainably.com website. This is a free resource open sourced essentially from a New Belgium Brewing as they went through their process. They said, here's something any brewer, every brewer can tap into. I was fortunate to be able to help them with some of the tools uh, and reference materials that are part of that. Uh, protect the only planet with beer, I'm, all, I'm down with that. Um, the EPA also has a really neat thing called a treasure hunt for microbreweries. You could take your team half a day and walk through the entire brewery, top to bottom, left to right, and there's all these great ideas that you can look at of ways to reduce energy, save costs, uh, be more efficient. The National Brewers Association has a sustainability group and have a ton of great resources and update those and statistics. And uh, something I want to point out is, and this is related to the topic before, that you're very aligned with the goals that the state has and the federal government has and others. So there are a ton of grant funding opportunities that are coming down. I'm helping some of the bigger entities go after the, the big dollars, but these are flowing down to any size uh, company, any size organization. Even if you're nonprofit uh, or others or low profit, um, <laughs> these are things that you can still tap into. And uh, they're at a regional level, at a state level, at a federal level. Um, and it's important because the, most of these are just opt in and first come, first serve until the money's gone. They're not going to come knocking on your door saying, hey, you got to check this thing out. We got money for you. You have to go out after it and look at that. And then finally, your Brewers Association is, and this, these sort of events and activities are huge to share those ideas and get them out. And, and we've got so much going on here uh, next couple of days to learn from. And I'm advocating for a more formal way to share that information and be a resource to, to you all as well. So let's look at some of the brewery actions uh, specifically that you can look at and consider. Uh, local regenerative organic grains. Here's an example from our friends uh, Sing Sing Kill on uh, you know local uh, New York farm beer um, grains. Uh, being all electric and all green power from that, there are lots of opportunities for you to do that and actually save money. 
Uh, one of the things that we've looked at on, uh, from an electric um, brew kettle or electric boiler is that you know, some of the latest vendors and technologies as maybe you grow and expand or replace equipment, they have systems up to 15 barrels uh, that can be all electric. So you've got a lot of, a lot of range to, to uh, adapt. Uh, waste heat recapture systems, of course you heat up the wort and then you gotta cool it down and you gotta keep, uh, and, and every time you do that, there's heat that has to be moved around. So be able to re recapture those, use those for uh, hot water, for washing and cleaning and, and preheating. Uh, recipe and process improvements. I don't know if Southern Tier is here, but uh, I just read an article about something they're doing on no-boil IPA, basically getting up to pasteurization temperature and then, uh, and then using that as, uh, for a hazy IPA as the input. And so uh, that reducing the energy used is, uh, is another way too. CO2 recapture and reuse. I've talked to three companies in the last couple of weeks that have systems from very small all the way to, to massive breweries to capture the CO2 that you produce. Of course, you know that yeast uh, generates flavor and alcohol. It also generates the heat you have to get rid of sometimes and a lot of CO2. And then you have to turn around and buy it from a source that is probably unreliable these days or very expensive. So there are opportunities to capture what you're already creating and turn that back into the process, stabilizing your, uh, your supply of CO2, but also improving the quality of the CO2 that you use rather than coming from an ammonia-based process or something else. Uh, pack tech recovery and reuse, you'll hear about some great ideas on that later. Uh, I had the opportunity to do some research on their uh, LCA, what's called life cycle assessment of um, environmental impact. And what's interesting is they, of course, they use 100% um, PCR content for the plastic itself, but they also use all electric green power to form those. Then you have this great resource and they can be reused over and over and over again. You can pop them off, put them on, pop them off, put them on. So as long as you have a, a process to do that, you can reuse those. Saves money. And then uh, you've got those locally and in cooperation with others, there's lots of, lots of opportunities there to reuse those. Spent grain upcycling. So a lot of times that goes into uh, agricultural feed stocks, right, for livestock feed. Um, another way to do that is there's a company out of uh, central New York that is taking that and then upcycling into feed for aquaculture. So it's a closed system. So everything that goes into that system then becomes farmed fish. And then that is something that all the waste from that is, is used to create biogas and other things. So, so some pretty cool things, innovation right here in New York State. Waste reuse and recycle, of course, we wanna make sure that we try to reduce that wherever possible. But also think about on upstream, like what's the packaging that you get? What are the materials? What's the plastic that's maybe wrapped around a pallet? How can you look at reducing that? And then electric and low impact transportation. There's tons of opportunities out there in the state and from a federal perspective to support uh, any sort of vehicles that you have or charging stations for your customers or your employees if they have electric vehicles. And then finally, low impact packaging choices. So we saw how, you know, you can think how different packaging makes a difference. And so packaging you can reuse like growlers or ways to make sure that whatever uh, you do distribute gets into the recycling uh, process as efficiently as possible. So there's a lot of examples, there are tons more. I'm just so encouraged by everything you're doing and all the ideas that are happening. Every time I talk to a, a, a different brewer, there's something new they're doing, that they're doing uh, that is just amazing and interesting and should be shared. So what would be the net impact? You don't have to do all of them. I'll go back, I can use the back button here. You don't have to do all of them. Let's say you do half or most of these. You explore these and, and you take the path and some of you are already doing a lot of these right now. What would be the impact from, a, in a, from an environmental perspective on what we saw before. What could you do if you pursued most of those actions, not all of them? Well, that would cut your emissions in half. So the number that you just saw in that glass, now is half of what it was before. Just by doing things that, as you can see, you recognize are ready today, you could deploy tomorrow if you chose to. Now let's go back to the areas of impact. Well, in addition to the brewery we just looked at, is customers and community. So how do you, uh, you know, what are the ideas for engagement in this way? So we wanna connect the dots between what you're doing in the brewery and how that relates to your customers and how it relates to the community at large. 
So in customer engagement, you can host local sustainability events and activities. You know, there are nonprofits or other, uh, um, maybe an opportunity with an HVAC provider that has, uh, that wants to sponsor a night that has uh, heat pumps for residential use. Or you wanted to be, offer something in the parking lot to help get the word out about sustainability and what you're doing and what others are doing. Um, you want to make sure you're putting ingredients, especially local ingredients, front and center. You know, if we go to a farm to table restaurant, they'll show on the menu, this is exactly where it came from, maybe a picture of the farmer, uh, what, you, what, um, what products you had, uh, maybe how it was grown, maybe custom for that particular um, uh, restaurant. And so you want to make sure you put those front and center. Because I know from my own perspective, when I go uh, to any new place, I'm always looking for local beer and how do I know it's local? Well, you, you, it, it's important to share that. Uh, you can advertise regular green drinks night, nights. Probably 10, 12 years ago, I got involved in this. It's sort of a global movement. It's open source, it's free. You just have to use the name. There's no, there's no sign up. There's no nothing to do. But essentially hosting a night where uh, maybe you know, one night a month to bring in a different clientele base and say, here's what's happening. You can talk about the things that are going on in the community. Do it at our brewery. Uh, you don't have to brew green beer. I think we had enough of that last week, right? The week before. Um, but these are things that you can do to bring in the crowd and share, remember, and get them to understand you know, what you're doing already and, and ask for their support to do more. How, how do you think about this? This is a good thing. How can we do more? How can you help us? I think it's also really important to leverage the New York Farm Brewer Network. Um, what I think is important here is uh, in talking about this and learning that there are uh, you know, almost 300, I think, uh, farm brewer licenses. What's interesting, I tried to look and see, okay, what's being shared today? I can't find it. I look online, I can find the, the, uh, the, a license to apply for it. I can find that online in New York State. And I can find, if I go to some of those of you who have the license, a little bit of information. But it would be really hard for me to go on a farm brew tour and say, hey, I happen to be in central New York. I want to try all the beers and see what the... Uh, see how it compares to others, it would be really tough to do that. And I think there's a missing opportunity there we need to work on is how do we celebrate New York beer in this way? And then finally, community engagement. So how do you align with local goals and activities? So Ithaca, for instance, has a Green New Deal program. So they want to do an equitable transition, this is from their website, to carbon neutrality by 2030. Now that's not just for their municipal operations and the police station and, and city hall. This is, they mean that for everything in the community. They mean all residents, all businesses. So if you have a brewery in Ithaca, they want you to go 100% green. And they're gonna find ways, or, and they have financing, and they have programs, and they have funding. But I'll tell you, the municipalities typically don't understand business very well. And I don't think businesses understand how municipalities work very well unless you need a, you know, a building license of some sort, a, a building permit to, to upgrade. And so finding ways to partner with those is really important because uh, they can support you. On a state level, there's all these great state programs that you can also tap into. And so, uh, of course, there's the, the drive EV electric uh, vehicle rebates and for charging stations if you want to put those at your brewery for customers that may be more and more coming in with electric vehicles. There's also a new program that just started at the beginning of this year called Clean, Regional Clean Energy Hubs. So every one of you are in some economic development region within the state. And they've just created a funding for an organization, a nonprofit in each one of these regions to be the hub for all the different clean energy activities and ideas and funding and opportunities uh, to, to be as a, as a central conduit for all that. So it's important for you to look at those and get connected to them because they have resources for you and they're looking for wins. They're looking for things that they can point out that are working the community to highlight. So you could be one of those highlights as well. You'd want to support programs for residents. Uh, so, <laughs> so here's one, uh, our friends at Hudson Valley, Marissa. Uh, so what's cool is they bought a machine. You'll hear about this later. I mean, it's that simple. They bought a machine. And the machine takes their waste cardboard stream or the waste cardboard that they have as packaging that comes in and they shred it in this cool pattern. Like what if you were to create a program where uh, residents could come in and pick up that material for packing for free? I know around the holidays when I send packages out to friends, relatives, uh, and I wanna 
you know, go get packing material. It costs a lot of money if I go to UPS store or Home Depot. You've got this great resource. Why not invite them to come in? Take that off your hands, free of charge. You're building a relationship with maybe a new customer segment that you haven't before. Advocacy for policies and programs, right? So this is something you mentioned earlier is, you know, how can you collectively have an impact across the state and how things are moving? What support do you have to make this transition and how do you get the word out? And nationally, you have a voice as well, a very important voice. And through your uh, Brewers Association here in the state is, um, you know, there are things that you can do to share those and coordinate and collaborate. So that's why I love to see such a great turnout at an event like this because it shows that you're, you're bought in and aligned. So as we wrap up, I just wanted to revisit the definition of what sustainability means. And this is aligned with what you already provided input on. So fulfilling the needs of the current generations without compromising the needs of future generations and that balance between economy, you know, meaning business, environment, and social well-being. I believe you all have a unique role and ability to improve the communities that you're in while making this widely, accept, widely appreciated product that brings people together. Now, from my perspective, I think that sustainability is an essential ingredient for craft brewing. It's not something extra you do, it's an ingredient. And so, what I think is that brewers, you provide a gathering place, you create jobs in economic development, you encourage responsible New York State agriculture, and you create happiness. These are all outstanding achievements, and so we want to see you keep going. With that, I have just one request. I always like to have one request of you, is that if there's anything, something of interest you saw in this presentation or talking to vendors or in sessions coming up ahead, if there's anything at all that piques your interest, that seems, that seems like you might want to try, get your phone out right then and text somebody. Text a colleague, text one of the folks on your team, text someone from the Brewers Association, text me and say, hey, this looks interesting, let's check it out. That'll get the ball rolling. It can be anything at all, but every single thing that you do will make a difference. It'll make a difference to your business and the environment. With that, thank you and have a great conference. Thank you, Ben. Uh, really great talk, really great message. Um, in terms of sustainability and this conference, we've got a few things going on. As you can see, we don't have the traditional paper programs anymore. We've done away with those. There are QR codes throughout for you to scan to get the uh, schedule, so, so use that. Um, we also have uh, composting and landfill trash cans around. Please use those. Um, and the cans, there's going to be a lot of cans. They'll all be uh, uh, redeemed, uh, by, uh, and the, the proceeds from the redemption will go to the Hudson Mohawk Humane Society. So please make sure the cans get into the can bins. Um, here is the schedule uh, for, for the rest of the day. Now is a great time before we begin at 11 o'clock to visit um, all of the exhibitors upstairs and downstairs. Uh, and I hope you all have a great conference. Thanks.